Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science Wednesday evening virtual service via Zoom and Facebook Live. We're so glad you could join us this evening. We're going to begin a 10 minute session prior to the service. So I invite you to just be seated, be comfortable. Wherever you are seated right now, to close your eyes, to allow you to relax and just try to find but still relax, just in a way that you are not going to be prone to nodding off. And then for the 10 minutes, I'm just going to focus on our breath, the in-breath and the out-breath. As we do so, we keep our awareness in the present moment. It might help to silently say to yourself, breathing in with the in-breath, breathing out with the out-breath. And the mind has a tendency to wander, to get distracted, and that's perfectly normal. And this is an opportunity to cultivate that part of us that can Observe what kind of thinking about the past or the future. What kind of the feeling? Bring your back to the breath. Breathe in.
And so as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your body temple. Take a nice deep breath in. Release it. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your fingers. And as you feel ready, just open your eyes. So once again, welcome to our Wednesday evening service. Welcome to those of you who joined us during the meditation. We're so glad you're with us this evening. Let's begin our service with our opening chant led by the wonderful Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret and Sam. So let's take this moment to turn our attention inward and join together in prayer. Just allowing ourselves to open to that part of us that can perceive beyond our physical senses, that can perceive how all life is interconnected. All creation is one. Where we can sense that connection we share with all beings, all parts of creation. Because truly, everything in this manifest universe exists as a manifestation of the one life, the one power, the one infinite invisible that I call God that this one incarnates itself into all creation, that each and every one of us exists as an individualized expression of this one life of God, inseparable from every aspect of God's nature. And so I know it is that nature of God to have that greater experience, greater knowingness, greater awareness of itself and to experience and express itself more fully through all parts of creation that brings us together. We feel the calling of spirit for us to awaken to its divine nature and experience and express it more fully in our lives. And I know that that intention is fully supported by every part of this service this evening. We feel that vibration of God's love in which we are all interconnected. We feel that love just flowing through everyone that is of service this evening and we get to be uplifted by it. I know we are uplifted and inspired by that love of the divine as it flows through Sam and Margaret this evening 
through the music, through Margaret's soul, through every part of all that unfolds. I know that the message that comes through me this evening is also of the divine that we all have come to hear this message, myself included, and that we are all blessed and uplifted by being together in community and through all that ex is experienced through our time together. And so in gratitude for all the healing and the revealing and the blessings that unfold throughout the service, I just say, thank you, God. And I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Margaret. Ah, that was very soothing. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, good evening. I wanted to look at the idea of incremental transformation this evening. So, you know, in Science of Mind, we're always promoting the idea of transforming our consciousness, transforming our mindset, our belief system to have a greater awareness of God's nature that resides in and around all of us, that's present everywhere throughout creation. If we're not experiencing God's goodness, it's due to the fact that we haven't fully awakened to that divine nature, and we're not sensing its presence in the moment. We're not sensing the good that we can bring to every situation we encounter in this worldly experience. And so as we transform our thought patterns and perceptions to more fully recognize God's nature as the core nature within all of us, we call it forth into our life experiences by transforming, by changing our thoughts about, let's say, not being lovable, or only being lovable under certain conditions not being able to love others unless they meet certain criteria. If we change or transform those to accepting that as expressions of God, we're always worthy of love. There's always a way to hold others in a vibration of love. Then we manifest all kinds of loving relationships in our lives. We're much more aligned and open to that vibration of love and taking it in and sharing it because we've transcended those belief systems that impeded the expression, the flow of love in our lives. And so that's the same principle that if we transform our limited thinking or our thoughts of being separate from God's abundance, being separate from God's vitality and health, being separate from joy or fulfillment, when we transform those to have a greater acceptance of those God qualities in us, we experience those qualities in some way beyond what we've experienced before. So this transformation process, you know, how this occurs, we, we talk about the fact that God is always communicating with us in the realm of ideas, that, that we reside within, within this infinite consciousness of God from which we're constantly receiving these, this feeling of or feeling this impulse of God for its nature of goodness to be expressed through us and to be experienced by us. And we're constantly receiving ideas of how we can experience that nature beyond ways that we've known it or experienced it up until now. So we get 
visions of ways we can experience love as loving, healthy relationships. We get visions of how we can experience abundance and security or financial health. We start get, get ideas of you know, ways that we can experience physical health or creative fulfillment in our lives beyond what we've experienced up until now. And if we can just release those old patterns of thinking that are saying, you know, that's just not possible for me, or no, it can't look that way, it has to look like this, then we transform our belief system, we transform our consciousness such that we're able to manifest greater good, the greater good that we've envisioned for ourselves. Here's the challenge. Because we reside within this infinite mind, that we are finite expressions of this infinite mind, within this realm of infinity, that we, you know, we can think beyond our physical experiences. We can perceive possibilities beyond what's present in our lives today. The possibilities we can envision may seem way beyond our current conditions and life experiences. We can easily become impatient with the incremental steps that it usually takes to transform our consciousness to have a greater acceptance of that good and to thereby allow it in, in our lives. We can get impatient with the incremental human steps it takes to fully manifest the greater good that we are perceiving for ourselves. And I think that's, you know, it's particularly challenging in this day and age where the timelines it used to take to do so many things have just dramatically been reduced. I mean, just really shrunk to almost nothing. I mean, look at the things that at one time it took days to do. For example, if you were exchanging documents with you know, companies or, you know, sending letters to friends or whatever, it often took days before they received it, days before you got a response. And now, you know, with the internet, these things are practically instantaneous. Think of, you know, how we used to go to the library. Do you, does anyone, well, yes, I know libraries are still there, but, you know, for the amount that we can just sit at home and almost instantaneously get information via the internet that before, again, would have taken a journey to a place where we could do the research, have to write it down, not just copy and paste it. We actually had to write things down, take copious notes, or bring the book home with us. You know, all of these things now we're, we're doing so quickly. We've become really accustomed to things happening immediately. So when some of the ideas of the new experiences of the good we're opening up to, that we're considering, aren't fulfilled, if not instantaneously, at least quickly, we can be become really discouraged. We can abandon our pursuits. We can just feel like this just isn't, isn't happening for me. You know, and I think it would really serve us to recognize that while there are certain things that have sped up here in the world that through this consciousness that is accepted that you know, we can do things more quickly and found it's very creative ways uh, to be able to share information and all of that, you know, there are other things. There's this other side, I think, of our divine nature that really enjoys the incremental process, the incremental steps, the beauty of each little step that it requires you know, for us to evolve in consciousness and to manifest the greater good. I don't know if you've noticed, but the process of planting seeds and then whatever we planted growing, I don't think that has sped up dramatically over time. All forms of human and animal life, I think, still need the same time to gestate in the womb, you know? I don't think babies are suddenly being conceived and then born 20 minutes later. Um, 
there's something beautiful about each step. I'm sure that in the parenting process, I can ask both of you, <laughs> parents who are here, that there are times that parents wish their kids could just spontaneously grow up and leave the home. I'm sure there are times that that would be a parent's way <laughs> of getting some nods <laughs> here in the room. But I bet that if within 24 hours a child was born and before you know it was walking into the room as the mom is recovering from the childbirth and saying, okay, mom, that was great, I'm off to college, uh, parents would feel a little bit robbed of all those experiences that we get to experience over the years, even if they were taxing at times. You know, I personally, I love uh, time-lapse fo uh, photography, you know, where they show the seed that just suddenly comes, sprouts through the earth and you know, everything is, um, you know, sh short and such that, you know, you see the, the plant, its evolution in a matter of minutes. Can you imagine if that was happening all around us all the time? First of all, you, you barely finish mowing the lawn when it was time to turn around and mow it again because everything is just growing uh, instantaneously. You know, you plant that tomato plant and the next thing you know, the tomatoes are there and you haven't even figured out what you want to do with them. You know, there's a beauty to the incremental steps if we recognize it. And so an antidote to feeling disheartened with the time it can take from the inception of an idea to its fulfillment is to bring our awareness to the value and the beauty of each step. Pause to just appreciate it and move on to the next. You know, in this uh, practical mysticism class I've been teaching, we've had discussions about the fact, you know, we're dealing with reading um, you know, the writings of individuals whose consciousness is way beyond where we are that can be inspirational, but it can sometimes feel discouraging to say, okay, I'm trying to demonstrate more of that consciousness, but where I am right now compared to you know, the consciousness I'm reading about, it just feels like, okay, how can I even say I have any kind of mystical awareness? But again, I shared um, a reading from Pema Chodron to, to really instill that sense of, you know, just every little step, every way that we grow makes an impact and is valuable if we recognize it. And so she, in um, one of her books that I was reading, talks about this idea of if we want to, say, uh, eat in a healthier way, and we want to experience greater health through a healthier diet. But we're currently prone to really craving sweets, and particularly, we have a weakness for chocolate chip cookies. That idea of, you know, I have to have for gratification is, you know, something that's quite predominant in our consciousness. When she says, the next time we're tempted to have chocolate chip cookies, we don't necessarily need to take a drastic step. We don't, if we're smelling, you know, the, that wonderful smell of chocolate chip cookies that are baking or whatever, we don't need to get in the full lotus position and meditate for hours until, you know, that, that lovely, lovely aroma <laughs> dissipates. She said, we can just pause for a moment. Just pause for a moment and take a moment to observe the feeling of craving, kind of like what we did in meditation, where we catch ourselves in a thought and we just observe it for a moment. We just watch and then bring our awareness back to center. Well, to just watch that process of craving, what it feels like, without judgment, just observe it for a moment. That small step has already altered our pattern of just automatically smelling the cookies and going to get them. We've taken that small step, and that small step, science would prove to us that little shift in consciousness to pause for a moment actually started a process of rewiring 
our brains to not have such a craving. Now, she says it doesn't mean we don't necessarily go still and get the, con uh, the chocolate chip cookies that time, but we already did one little thing to start rewiring ourselves. So next time maybe we pause a little bit longer and we just notice what's going on. And gradually this craving doesn't have such a hold on us. So I think it's important to take a moment to pause and appreciate those shifts in the behaviors, those shifts in our thinking. As as small as it may seem, just to be aware that, okay, I, I didn't get so caught up in that mind pattern that time. That was great. That was great. That For a moment, I, I broke the pattern. It's very much, I'd like to go back to the creation story in Genesis. You know, as God creates, God doesn't just say, okay, everything done. And now the earth and all nature and humans, everything is just created. No, it talks about a gradual process that God calls things forth into expression, pauses, says it is good, calls for some more, pauses, is it, it is good. And then takes time to just take in the beauty and goodness of what has been created. So how about when we're perceiving that greater good of healing, some kind of a relationship. If we pause to just appreciate that first step of maybe calling someone for a referral, you know, for counseling, that would be a first step. But we just did something to break the pattern, to try and move in a different direction, to accept the possibility of healing for ourselves. Or just to pause and recognize that we had, had, we had a shift and actually we're able to open to the courage to contact that person and maybe set up an appointment to talk and work our way through whatever discord. Just that first step. You know, it, it took a shift in consciousness to appreciate that and appreciate that we're moving in the direction of that greater good we're perceiving for ourselves. You know, if we're having issues with our financial health, maybe overspending, you know, find one thing, one thing that we might not need to spend money on that we have a tendency to, you know, that maybe that, that Starbucks coffee, that maybe we could do something that isn't quite so expensive and just pause and feel the goodness of that step. Because that's what gives us the impetus to open up in consciousness and allow more of that vibration of the good that we're perceiving for ourselves to flow in and move us to the next step. And I mean, certainly it's, it's exciting to experience major shifts that we sometimes experience quickly, almost instantaneously. Sometimes we have these big aha moments in consciousness. Sometimes something just seems to appear out of nowhere and I think it's part of our divine nature to be open to those, you know, leaps, those wow experiences. But if we also feel the beauty and goodness of the small incremental steps, then we get to experience God's delight in both the incremental steps and major leaps that we can experience in realizing greater good. And so let's take this moment to just anchor that in consciousness. And so I invite you to call to mind some greater good you imagine for yourself, but maybe it feels overwhelming because of all the steps it might take to achieve. Just even for you to accept this as possible feels like it's such a leap in consciousness. It might be about breaking a pattern that doesn't serve you, but it's so ingrained that you just can't imagine breaking it or getting beyond it. And allow yourself to feel what it would feel like if this greater good were manifest right now. 
in the realm of imagination, you can perceive that greater good, what it would feel like. And now just think of one simple step you could take toward the realization of that greater good. One simple step. Maybe it's making a phone call, doing some research, not giving into temptation, maybe spending just a little more time in meditation. Whatever that step is, feel the goodness of that single step, that movement toward the greater good. How it brings forth maybe a greater sense of dominion, a greater sense of order into your life, love, fulfillment. Just allow yourself to feel that goodness for a moment. How with that one step, something lightened up just with that one step. And just know that that vibration of feeling good about this one step carries you to the next and the next and the next after that. Each moment, something is being transformed into greater good. And so from this place in consciousness, let us turn our awareness to the truth about some of the human conditions and challenges that we face along our human journey and allow the transformation to occur from knowing these truths together. Absolutely knowing that God, that one life of God, is ever present throughout creation, that each and every one of us is an incarnation of this one life. Let us absolutely know that where there is any discomfort, any uneasiness about the changes that occur in this human dimension, that nothing is permanent, including our human lives, but the underlying life of the divine, God, is changeless, birthless, deathless. We remain interconnected with it and with each other throughout all eternity. And as we know that truth, that God is always there through all changes to be experienced in some new way, we are able to just relax into the knowingness that any change that is occurring is just God showing up in some new way. Let us absolutely know that that one life is a vibration of health, wholeness, and well-being in every way it can be experienced. So where there's any human experience of dis-ease, discord, that that vibration of God's health is ever present to be revealed, that it is the vibration out of which every form of healing and revealing comes forth. It is coming forth as all the ways that we are awakening to that vibration of health and transcending, transforming this experience of pandemic into well-being, reestablishing health in our lives. Let us absolutely know that that presence that is always seeking to give of itself, unto itself, is a creativity that operates through us and carries us to those places where our unique talents and gifts, our ways of expressing its nature, are absolutely needed and valued and that we feel fulfilled in sharing those gifts of the divine in this world. Let us remember that this one nature of God is limitless. It is infinity. It knows nothing of lack and limitation. So any human experience of lack and limitation are simply 
human ideas we've imposed upon the divine. And so as we know this truth, that we are one with the infinite source, the supply of all good, that we create that opening for that greater abundance of the divine to be revealed and realized in our lives. And we remember right here, right now, that God's core nature is one of love, infinite, unconditional love. As we remember this truth, we open up the channels for greater love in the form of self-love, love of others, love of all that exists in this world and bringing that love and taking in that love constantly. And knowing that that impulse of love is for greater good, let us set, let us set our individual intentions for goodness in silence. So whatever this greater good may be, greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us know that God is right there. We are feeling God's impulse for a greater revelation of itself in all these situations. And as we know that, God's goodness is indeed revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our, our affirmative giving. We thank you for all the ways that you continue to support this community so we can continue to be here to support you. You should be seeing a link right now to bring you to our donation page on our website if you want to make your donation online. Uh, if you're not seeing it, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give. You can also text your gift by uh, texting the word give to area code 818-457-3419. Or you can uh, call the church office after the service. We'll be here for 20 or 30 minutes after service to take your donations over the phone via credit or debit card. And that number is 818-762. 7566. And of course, you can still mail in your checks. But again, however you continue to support us, thank you so much. So from this place of feeling that vibration of love and support that is behind these gifts, let us hold our hands to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world 
and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, <laughs> and Sam. <laughs> so um, as we bring our service to a close, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been of service this evening. Um, let me start here in the sanctuary. Thank you once again, Adam, who's making sure we're heard and seen up here, to Doreen and Blair, who are working all the technology for us, to make sure we're being transmitted out there. <laughs> to Brenda, who is on camera, second camera here, and Nikki, who is shadowing her, to our wonderful, wonderful Sam, as always, and our diva, <laughs> Margaret. Thank you, that was just so perfect. I almost went like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yes, <Yeah>, incredible. <laughs> um, to those of you out there in virtual land, thank you to practitioners Christine Crawford and Bob Lyon for holding vigil for us this evening, for uh, our Zoom support, Mark Kroll, Lynn Romanowski, and Ray Regan. And once again, thank you to Melissa Allen for providing our uh, Facebook Live support. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a reminder again, that donations of the phone are, uh, can be made for 30 minutes after service. If you just call into the church office, 818-762-7566, or go to our website, nhcrs.org, and then forward slash give, takes you straight to our donation page. And by the way, from there, if you'd like, you can uh, set up your recurring don uh, donations. So. I just, I love, I just get these thank you messages every week from Terry Prince, and I go, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Today, that's what reminds me I need to work on my talk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you could also text the word give to uh, area code 818-457-3419. And again, just thank you for your support. Prayer with the practitioners available after service on Zoom. If you're on Facebook Live, just go to the website, uh, connect with us on Zoom, and you can be connected with a practitioner for one-on-one -on -one prayer. You can email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call in uh, the prayer request to the church office, select option four on the menu, and that allows you to leave a voicemail message that um, you know we will check every evening the voicemail messages and the emails and make sure all those requests are sent out to our practitioners. 
Um, also, if you just want to call in and listen to a recorded prayer, uh, you can call in for dial a prayer, which is also in the church number and option three that allows you to hear a pre-recorded message in prayer if you need that spiritual boost. Wednesday evening service next week, same time, same links on Facebook Live and Zoom. My topic will be gifts from our challenges. Okay. <laughs> gifts from our challenges. Please join. <laughs> Grief support group led by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur, will meet this Sunday on Zoom at 1 p.m. All are welcome, and you know, for anyone going through any type of grief, loss of a loved one, or it could be loss of work or something where we're grieving, um, Carol is really, really wonderful in facilitating that process. And um, now, for a really high note, <laughs> don't miss our North Hollywood Church Spring Concert on Zoom. That's this Friday, that's two days from now, and less than 48 hours from now, because it begins at 7.30 p.m. It's gonna be a wonderful evening of songs and celebration from a sensational soloist, Bill A. Jones, and our very own Rev Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. You can find out all the details, uh, and get your tickets on our website. Uh, I just know it's gonna be a great evening. It's gonna be a great fundraiser for the church. We really hope you can be there. and. Uh, enjoy that experience together. And as I said on Sunday, having that wonderful experience is gonna help us when we have to wake up an hour earlier on Sunday morning, because we are springing forward, we can wake up and go, oh, but that was such a great concert and it's gonna give us that boost. Help us with that incremental step in getting <laughs> up that morning. So just remember, set your clocks ahead Saturday night. Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services gives you an opportunity 20 minutes before or hang on, on, out on Zoom uh, after service to connect and visit with your fellow congregants. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. They, uh, they didn't do so this past Sunday because they were uh, joined with the women's group at 1 p.m., but they're back to the 11 to 11.30 time slot this coming Sunday, all men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. All that information is on our website, nhcrs.org. So once again, thank you for being with us this evening. Let's turn within one more time. And so how grateful I am all the ways that we've experienced that presence of the divine throughout our time together this evening. I just absolutely know that every element of this service has created some shift, some change in consciousness for us to experience and express that divine nature at the center of our being in some greater way, that in ways that we're not even aware of because they are incremental shifts, we have shifted and are stepping into that greater experience of God's goodness. And so I'm so grateful for the healing and revealing the blessings that have unfolded and that are coming to us as a result of this time and the way they continue to expand and bless others as we go on about our lives. And so in gratitude for this and so much more, I release this word, absolutely knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. Thank you again for being with us. Let's join together one more time in the song.